How would you see the world if you experience it in my shoes? For years, I've been traveling for work, seeing the world firsthand, but being unable to communicate to others what I see and how I feel. So a few years ago, I decided to teach myself how to film. Armed with a couple of lenses, a microphone, and a semi-professional camera, I began to record my unscripted life. What you are about to see is a slice of my life filmed between March and June of 2016, as live in my shoes. Yes. Oh, it is cut. Do you want to help me make some coffee? Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Ah. Take away a Today we're gonna go to Paris, but this time I'm not flying alone, I'm flying with my wife. The goal of going to Paris this time is I'm a discussant at the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. They just released a report on uh, inequality and productivity, so uh, I'm gonna be one of the people that basically are gonna react to that report on the official event. And it's gonna be nice not to be traveling around all by myself, but also to go along with Anna. Should Papa and Mama go to Paris? No. <laughs> no. Should, what, they should stay home with Riska? Yeah. yeah. Take two. It's so much easier to travel without a baby, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, even before we thought it's hard to travel, traveling with a baby, that's hard right now. It's like, yeah. So we'll step to our trip and drink the cocktail. Yeah, cheers, Mama. I'm on vacation. I'm gonna be half drunk all these five days. Well, I cannot be half drunk. I, I know, but I can. Yeah, so I will. On red wine, baguette, uh, foie gras. How are you gonna get drunk in baguette? No, but because I'm gonna eat it with red wine. <laughs> so this one is kind of like two line poems, okay. but like jokes. <laughs> Okay, another joke. <laughs> I'm very bad in translation. It will put croutons in your salad, they scratch your face. <laughs> because it's typical Russian thing. You get <laughs> you get drunk and end up with your face down in your salad. Okay. <laughs> Paris. Who knows? Italo, H I D A L G O. We're now in Paris, and Dima, Anna's brother, came to visit us from Ukraine. Anna hasn't seen Dima. How long have you seen Dima? Last time. Ukraine was five years and remember he couldn't get a green card to visit our wedding because I don't know why US Embassy yeah, was not given it. Yeah, they rejected him like three times, yes. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so he couldn't go to the wedding, so he hasn't met Iris. Anyway, mm -hmm. so we're gonna meet Diva today and we're gonna go through Paris with him. So my brother, he's younger than me like five years younger and in a way right now with the tough times in Ukraine I was very happy to see that he is doing very well because he works for one of the software engineering companies 
and this company can work with uh, a lot of clients outside of Ukraine so even though I'm outside and cannot help him he actually can help himself he is learning English and I was very glad to see that he right now could communicate with my husband way easier than uh, last time he saw him so overall I'm hoping that while he would travel outside of Ukraine more often he would be able to get visa and come and visit us in US and see my daughter who he have not met yet and I hope we will stay in contact more often. What the fuck is this about, huh? <laughs> don't be a dad of a little girl. That's <laughs> yeah, dads of little girls are prohibited, so no, it's about you. Yeah, you cannot be a dad. Dad forbidden. is that the Mona Lisa originally wasn't a very famous painting but then it got stolen and it got a lot of press because it got stolen so that made it famous and then it got recovered and when it got recovered it even got more press and then it got more famous so now the most amazing thing about the painting is not the painting it's like the crowd and the fact that this is one of the few paintings that everybody knows about but if you look at it it's not that different from the other paintings but you don't see other paintings that have kind of like a crowd of people at it you know paintings are kind of Name. You cannot look at them for that long, but in this case, you know, you've seen it reproduced in so many other media. It has become something that is beyond the painting itself. It's more like the social phenomena surrounding it. Yeah, and we saw it too. Yeah, person. but you didn't know that, did you? No. I spent the morning working on my response to the OECD report and since the report discusses inclusive development, my response focused on the difference between the development of places and the development of people. The idea of developing places is based on the implicit assumption that development can be engineered by investing on skills, infrastructure and institutions. But the fact that development has occurred in some places does not mean that people know how to engineer it. In fact, the development literature is filled with examples of failed development efforts. So an alternative way to think about development is to focus on the development of people. This is the idea that development happens when people are included in developed places. These are the places where the networks of people that have accumulated the knowledge and know-how we need to be collectively productive are located. But including people in developed places nowadays is not possible because the right to work is not a universal human right. For most people, it is illegal to work on most of the world. People are not free to sell their labor unless they obtain a hard-to-obtain permit known as a work visa. Of course, I have the privilege of not having to worry about these restrictions because I am a citizen of two OECD countries and a permanent resident of a third one. 
but I still think it is bullshit that those who need opportunities more than me lack the freedom to sell their labor in most of the world. Of course, many people don't realize that we live in a world where working is illegal, but that is because they never tried to work elsewhere, not because working is not illegal in our world. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. A passport, please. But this is what these guys at the OECD send us to print. Which email do you want? Like, yeah. Do you have an invitation, madam? Uh, I have this thing. Yeah, I have like the English. Yeah, that's what they send us, man. Yeah. No, no English. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm a speaker. Yeah. You must uh, receive an invitation with a barcode. Huh? Ah, okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. so they don't send a barcode, they send kind of like this, this PowerPoint slide. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Hidalgo, yes. yes. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Uva. Ah, oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. This is my wife, Anna. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hi, Uva. <laughs> nice to meet you. You know, I can make one with a Sharpie, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's right here, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is once a year at the forum or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, almost 3,000 participants registered, so... Really? 3,000? Yes. I thought it was going to be like a few hundred. No. So you guys have a big auditorium then? Yes, we do. Oh. Yeah, what, what about in Chile are you writing yeah, thesis? I'm writing about entrepreneurship. So oh, okay. Social responsibility and the role of I know a lot of people that you would be interested in interviewing them. Really? Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. I will be allowed to... To film? To film, yeah. yeah do you think you're gonna, she's going to be allowed to film at the... Uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to tackle you, they're too diplomatic. They're just going to look at you funny. And I also try to understand network intelligence, basically how groups of people become smart together. Okay. We're going to start at first um, with a scene-setting presentation by uh, Gabriela Ramos. Are there policies? that by trying to push productivity are going to increase inequality? The presentation that I have to react to is delivered and what was funny is that the conversation until I got the point to say what I wanted to say had stayed a little bit on things that were relatively unspecific which is something that tends to happen in these policy circles and, and when I jumped in and talked about labor mobility being an issue that needs to be considered when we're thinking about global inclusive growth then the room woke up a little bit. We live in a world in which the right to work is not a universal human right. To work anywhere in the world, most people need to ask for permission. No. That permit is called a work visa. Of course, I was the only person that the British moderator cut out. If you look at the estimates that people have put on labor mobility, they say half a percentage point of the labor force of developed countries. If it were to come from developing countries, it would equal all foreign aid. The estimate for global labor mobility would be to double world's GDP. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to very briefly discuss labor mobility, and then, we're, and then we're going to take, I'm going to ask some questions from the audience. A lot of people came after and congratulated me for having pushed that difficult topic that nobody else wants to touch. Then we went for a cocktail party and then we went to a dinner at the Chateau, which is like the fancy part of the OECD complex, so it was a lot of fun. One day a journalist was driving through a rural area and he noticed that there was a man standing uh, under the sun on his land and watching uh, at the sky. So that has attracted this journalist. He stopped his car and went back and curiously he asked, could you please tell me what are you doing? He said, don't you see that I am working for the Nobel Prize? He said that I read in my childhood that those who are outstanding in their field <laughs> How many days has it been raining? Three. Since we came here. 
And yesterday and today it's non-stop. <laughs> introduce you in the session now and okay. present the book. Um, these are the elements that I have which are quite limited. Okay. What else can I say about you? Sí. Algo divertido. Algo divertido. Cuéntame algo de ti. Algo divertido, shit. Un poco más el lado humano. De sí. o sea, tú eres, tú eres esta, uh, americano, chileno? Chileno. Chileno de nacionalidad. Sí. Okay. ¿Y llevas viviendo en, en Estados Unidos? Eh, casi 12 años. 12. Sí. ¿Qué edad tienes? Eh, 36. O sea que es la sí. tercera parte de tu vida. Claro, exacto. <laughs> Oh, people are waiting for us. Wow! There's a massive crowd. There's a massive crowd. There is a crowd. So the book is called Why Information Grows. And it's a book that it's a little bit strange because on the one hand, you know, it's a book about economic development. And on the other hand, it's a book about some basic fundamental physics concepts. So for example, here if you look at Mexico in 1982, you would see that Mexico, you know, exported vehicle parts and accessories at that time, but did not export cars yet. Yeah? But exported a lot of products that were similar to that. These are the dots that are painted. The ones that are grayed out are the products that Mexico did not export. But if you look now at Mexico in 1996, then Mexico diversifies towards the production of cars. And in general, we find that that is true in all cases. All economies tend to move you know, to products that are similar to the ones that they make. <laughs> I have a person in my group, she's a filmmaker, so I give her all of the footage and then she makes 20 minute episodes for every week. One step back. Okay. And it's gonna be black and white and a little bit depressing like a French movie? <laughs> no? <laughs> smoke cigarette. And smoke cigarette. Yeah, there's no hope for the world. <laughs> Entonces, pero aquí alcanzo a filmar bien a la presidenta bajando. Okay. Look, and there's the minister on the back, like telling him stuff. <laughs> it's always funny to see a president walk by because there is always a crowd of people running in front of them, making sure they fix everything they're about to see. I guess the power to see the world as is, is a power that presidents don't have. to the priority line at the airline mm -hmm. and you're wearing kind of like the leather jacket and everything you know they look at you like who the fuck is this guy you know? really? <laughs> and, yeah and if you go like wearing kind of like something more like a suit you know it's like oh sir yes can i help you yeah. <laughs> and obviously you have the same miles no matter what the fuck you're wearing <laughs> yours our train you know uh, implied that we had to make a change because um, there were some repairs and we barely were able to make it so we ran all over the airport and we made it just in time I was so sweaty that I had to buy kind of like this t-shirt at the airport
What's this? That is, that is a camera. There. <laughs> Go like this. And it has the, the hole here, you can put it there. Okay, you want to put it here? 